howdy everyone this is Trisha and welcome to my channel today I'm going to be working on a fresh flower arrangement all right so let me show you the flowers that I got to make this particular arrangement I was at Sam's today and this is where I got my flowers from if you've heard of Sam's Club it's sort of like a Costco um, but that's where I got these flowers from so I just picked a bouquet that had lots of them this was, this cost me 17, I think it was 16 something, and it's called, a, I think it was called a deluxe, what is it called? Jumbo Premium Bouquet. So look at all the flowers that it has in there, and that's why I picked it, because it has different flowers, and this is the kind of arrangement that I like. I like a lot of different flowers, different colors, it's mainly like a, in, in like purple and pink kind of hues, but there was some yellow and green in there, so I thought that was really nice. Uh, to add to it, uh, I've got this uh, also, this cost me $5, Gypsoph Gypsophilia, for some, we call it baby's breath. So I got some of that. This is not necessarily something that you need to put in there. I just thought a little bit of a filler would be nice. And then I got these, these are, it just says greenery combo, but it's like a fern. And I'll take that out. So I thought this is a nice um, greenery filler or just to make maybe an arrangement a little bit bigger or grander than what it really is. I have a container here, a vase or vase, whatever you want to call it, a floral container that I've used in the past. It's still got some dirt in there from uh, the uh, moss that had been in there and dried up and just kind of corroded but I'm going to reuse this container any container that you may have at home even if it's just a little plastic uh, container it's fine uh, for fresh flowers you don't want to use anything that's paper or cardboard because you're going to be using water with it so you want to make sure that it's either uh, ceramic glass or a, pl a plastic for your container or you can use a metal can or something like that uh, so here I've got this product this is called I I've always referred to it as an oasis. It's a fresh flower oasis. It's also called a wet foam. This is the label that it uh, had. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, this is for fresh flowers. It, it's also like a brick, an oasis brick. And what you do with this is you put it in a container that's obviously going to have to be deeper than what I've used here. You want it enough uh, where you can pour plenty of water on it, like a shoebox kind of container, that type of size. You can use that or if you're going to wet several of them because you want to make several arrangements and maybe a bigger box and then you want to pour anywhere from a gallon to gallons of water in there and have the oasis soak up the entire water uh, you can leave it for about 30 minutes or so let it soak up really good i've actually poured water in this one already and i've left it here for a couple of hours and it's it soaked it up but it also started getting a little dry, so I'm just pouring the remainder of the water that I had in this. I really would like to submerge it in much more water, but for the purpose of the video, this is what I brought out. It was the quickest thing I could find, uh, so this is what I'm using. Now, because we're using a wet foam, we need a weatherproof uh, tape, floral tape. And this is a waterproof, not weatherproof, waterproof tape. There we go, and I did get this from Hobby Lobby. You can get these on Amazon, you can uh, eBay even, uh, or you can just look up, you know, like floral supplies and you'll find things like this. This is not the regular floral tape that I normally use to wrap around on stems, whether they're artificial or real fresh flowers. This is a specific waterproof tape that is used to hold the oasis in the container. Now also, I'm going to be using the stem uh, stem wire, forgive me, I forget what things are called. I know what they're for, I know what they look like, but sometimes I forget what is what they're actually called. It's stem wire, and this is a 22 gauge wire. Um, I got, actually, I didn't get this at Hobby Lobby, I got this at Michael's. I had to go to Michael's to find it because I couldn't find it at Hobby Lobby. And my wire, I also got it at um, Michael's. The only thing that I got at Hobby Lobby was actually the Oasis. I don't know why they have oases at Hobby Lobby, you know, for fresh flowers when they have nothing else that you can use for fresh flowers. Uh, I mean, as far as putting it together, like the tape and things like that that you need for that. Uh, so these stems uh, will be used on any stem that might feel like it's a little too uh, delicate to stand up straight or maybe sometimes 
one will break and you can use that to kind of hold it together. Uh, it's just nice and it, you could also use it to sort of manipulate a flower to bend it a little bit and I'll show you what I mean by that as soon as we get started. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead while this is soaking up this water and it pretty much already did. There's no water in here. So I'm going to need um, either wire cutters or if you want to use like a pruning shears to cut your flower stems, uh, some scissors, and then I'm going to use a craft knife to cut this uh, to fit to size into my container, okay? So those are the things that we're going to need. We don't need a glue gun. This is the one time I'm not even using a glue gun. Wow, okay, so, well, besides when I'm cooking. So let me go ahead and get all my flowers opened up and laid out so that I can decide um, how I want to place this. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put this oasis in our container and then we'll get to working on our design. So I've got all my flowers all sorted out. This has pretty much absorbed all the water that uh, it's going to absorb and it's going to be nice and heavy. So if you have this in a bucket with water and it's absorbed water but there's still water in there, just lift it up and let it drain and let all the water drip out of it before you, know, before you bring it over. Now that doesn't mean like oh you want to make sure this is all the water is out of it. You, this is going to be heavy, okay? It's going to be heavy with water. But you also don't want it dripping and then you get it all over the place. So then you're going to put it in your container. And you're going to see if you're going to have to cut it. And therefore you need a little a little craft knife. I got this from the Dollar Tree. It's like a little steak knife and little kitchenware items. And so just grab one of those. It's only a dollar. It lasts me a really good, good while. Uh, but I'm seeing that this brick pretty much fits into this container. It's not touching the bottom and I do want it to touch the bottom. So all I'm going to do is squish it till it goes down because it will take shape of the container. So the bottom part that I've been pushing down has gone inward in the little corners. So now it fits actually perfectly in here. But if I had to, I would just shave off, you know, or if I had to cut it in half, you know, to do, if I had a smaller container, then that's what you would do or even little tiny forts, sometimes even in half like that. But you really want a nice thick brick for your, to have enough water in there to keep your your plants nice. Now if you receive this or if you have this on your table and uh, the next day you can just touch it and if it feels a little dry, pour a little water in there so uh, the oasis will absorb it and keep your florals moist. Okay, for this particular uh, arrangement, we can either create a center piece so that we can see it from all the way around or we can create a tall arrangement. I'm kind of wanting to lead towards a tall arrangement and I feel like I can do a center piece the next uh, a video that I do for you. So that's what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to move the camera actually because you're not going to be able to see the height at this. I would have to put it way over here and that's a little too far for me to work with. So let me make an adjustment and I will be back. Okay, I think this is a better angle now that we have for our viewing our arrangement here. I'm going to take these three flowers, these calla lilies. I think they're calla lilies. But if you see this one, see how it kind of droops down? Let's say you just don't want it doing that. That is where you're going to be using these stems, these wire stems or stem wires. So let's pop that open, which I should have done already. one out. Can you see it against the white table here? The stem? Okay. What we do is we take the stem and you take your flower. You take the end of the stem here, the little end here, and you poke it into the flower just ever slightly. And then you hold it like that with your finger. Now you want to get a wire that is easily ma manipulated around your stem. You don't want to get one that's too thick and you can't bend it around your stem because what's going to happen is you're going to end up holding the stem really tight in your hands and you could crush the stem. And we don't want to do that. We want to just move the wire. So we're going to wrap this around and this will help give the stem, the, and the closer you wrap it, the more stability you have. This will give it some stability to stand up straight 
rather than doing the dripping that it was doing like that. It's now standing up straight. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it down here because I don't need this little bit of a curve that's happening there at the bottom of the stem. So that is where I take my scissors. Now there's different ways to cut this. You could cut this at a bit of an angle or you could cut it straight. It really doesn't matter. Okay. There we go. We're going to put this all the way around it. And don't worry about the wire because we are going to put other flowers in there that's pretty much going to cover you know that so don't worry about that now if you have another one that's nice and thick nice firm stem you don't have to do that now now that I have it like this also not only can I manipulate it so that it's standing up straight but I can also use the wire and bend at the wire not the stem but bend the wire and this will cause the whole thing to bend at the shape that I wanted. I guess you could see it against this background a little bit better. Or if I lay it down, you can see that it is now curved in the way that I want it to curve. Just slowly bend the wire, and you could actually manipulate it to bend even more. So this is why this uh, floral, or these stem wires are very useful, okay? So I'm gonna use this one with the thicker stem, this is going to be the height that I'm going to decide on my arrangement. So what I do is I hold this container at the edge of a table. Let's pretend the edge is right here in front. So that when I hold the stem, it can go further down, you know, it can go down, up and down like that. And I can measure it against the height of my container and decide how high or how low I want it to go. And I think I've talked about this. Uh, when I did the floral, the full floral arrangements. So this is this is the same the idea you're going to use when you're using fresh flowers. So I decided that I wanted it about that high, but I've got about this much of it that is hanging off. Let's see. Let's hold this up. I want it to be about so high. So as you can see, the stem is going further down than the arrangement, I mean the, the container, and I don't want that. I want it to only go in about a couple of inches at the most, so therefore I'm going to have to trim this. So now I know that I can place it right there, and that'll be a good height for my arrangement. So I'm going to place that first flower, and this is where you're also going to make decisions. Do you want this arrangement to cascade downward, maybe come out this way, a little bit that way or do you want it to be completely centered maybe a, a triangular shape or even an oval shape that depends on what you would prefer I'm going to work with a I think I want to do like a tall but I want it to be offset I want my triangle to be offset I want it over here and then I want it to kind of cascade in height downward and kind of come out like that okay so that's what I want to create so I've got my first flower there for my height now, to create that whole cascade look, I do want some of it to pop out this way. So again, I'm going to hold my next stem and decide at what height do I want it compared to this one. And I want it about right here because I do have a ton of other flowers that can fill up this area and fill up a lot right here. But I want this one to be about so high. And I can see that it's a little too long, so I'm going to trim that. I'm actually going to use my wire cutters because it has wire on the stem. Okay, so now I can place that, and I want to place it so that you can see the pretty flower forward there. Now, once you've picked the placement, do not touch it, do not move it, because the hole can become bigger, and it'll fall out, and then you'll have to make another puncture in the oasis. So we don't want to waste our oasis. Let's see. I could actually go a little bit higher than this one. But I don't think I have that many flowers to actually do the whole thing. So I'm going to go a little bit lower, and I'm going to go like about right here, which is about the same as this one. Give it just enough to insert into the arrangement and then trim it. And always hold it close to the bottom when you insert it. Don't try to insert it from way up here. Unless it's a rose or something that has a, a nice, very hard uh, stem, I was going to say bark, but stem uh, that will that is nice and firm. 
that you can actually puncture. But when it's something that feels like it might be a little delicate, maybe sometimes they're a little hollow. Uh, this one isn't really hollow, but it kind of feels that way. But it's very soft that if I think that if I tried to push it from up here, I could actually break it down here. So grab it from the bottom and push it in and just feed it down to the point that you need it. There we go. That's about as high or as low as I want that now. I'm going to do something because I completely missed a step here. And uh, the only reason that I realized that I missed a step is because my tape fell to the floor. So I'm going to cut, come right back, make sure that I show, show you how to put the tape on here first before we do anything else. All right, so I'm back and uh, I decided to sit down because uh, I've had uh, one of those days where I've done a lot of things. So anyway, I'm going to take this wet, or it's weather, what is it, waterproof tape. I haven't used it in such a long time. I know what it is and I know what it's for. Uh, I just don't recall exactly what it's called. Now this tape is awesome because it'll hold down this oasis. So we want to tape it to the side of the the vase here on the outside and a little bit on the edge here. Go across so it'll tape over here and just a bit down. You don't need to have it going down so much. Now don't worry about it being, you know, this tape showing on the sides because you're going to put greenery and flowers and that's going to cover all that up. So now we want some over here and we want that because we want to be able to hold down the oasis. We don't want it to pop out of the container and then all your flowers go flying everywhere so that's why you need to tape it down and just don't put it so close together because you want to make sure that you'll be able to put a, a flower you know and the tape won't be in the way okay so that's all I'm going to do and then I'm going to put some crisscrossing the other way and I'm going to show you how to do uh, probably an arrangement in the water because these also work really well when you're doing an, an arrangement in water with a, you know in a vase with some water and put it down the middle make sure your vase is um, really dry even though this is a waterproof tape make sure it's really dry and clean uh, you know, especially if there's any dust or oils on it. Mine was in my garage, uh, stored away from an arrangement from a long time ago. And I was going to buy a new uh, vase, and then I thought, you know, I've got plenty of them. So, or, you know, container. I usually just refer to them as a container because it's just a, a container. It's not really like a tall vase. Okay. Tape this way and that will be enough now before you put the flowers on there you want to put this tape on there and then what you want to do is you want to kind of turn it upside down and make sure that it's holding the oasis so if you can decide then um, that you might need more tape uh, you can go ahead and add it I don't want to hold it upside down now because I don't want to take the risk that I'm going to damage my flowers and um, I'm also taking the risk that this might all come out uh, but I'm letting you know to make sure that you do that. Okay, I'm so used to working with faux flowers now that I don't even think about those things. But um, this is something that you want to do when you're working with fresh flowers, just to tape it down. So as you can see from the top there, and the sides, how I got taped. Okay, so before I go on putting any more flowers, I'm going to go ahead and start working with these leaves here. A nice big packet. This pack cost me four dollars at Sam's. I thought this was a fantastic deal for all these leaves. Now, uh, obviously, if I'm going to work with them, I, I don't use them right away. I wish I had bought all the supplies to do all my videos all at once so that I could end up using all of this, but I didn't. So I'm probably going to end up having to buy more of these for my next arrangement. But that's okay. I'm going to cut this just long enough because I want it to come out the side here and only about a couple of inches are going to go into my oasis but I'm going to go down way here on the side and push it in so that this creates the length that I want for that cascade that I want to create right here. Let's put these in the trash. Now I want to put one on this side as well. This side won't be as far out 
as this side will be. It's kind of like a, I'm trying to remember the term. It's obviously all centered, but it is not going to be a, a traditional shape, if you will. It's not going to be a traditional size of arrangement where everything's even on one side and whatever you do on one side, you do to the other side. This is going to be, oh gosh, let's just use the word abstract for now because I can't think of the word. Okay, so now I'm pushing these in and I'm pushing this one a little bit further in. Okay, right here. So then what I want to do is I want to cut a whole bunch more because I want to build these sides. Okay, so my camera died on me again. Um, what I'm doing, I was saying, is I am adding these uh, bits of fern or whatever other leaf you want to use uh, to fill in this length that I'm doing here, but I'm filling in to cover the tape and I'm going to do the same on this side. Now I had a nice one that I thought was uh, standing up pretty nice and sti stiff. I want to put this one behind these flowers here. So I'm just going to cut off a tiny little bit because I do want it to be taller than these other flowers and just put it behind like that to create even more height. And I will move the camera a little bit more in a little bit so that you can see more of what I'm doing. But let me go ahead and cut some more of these nice and short for these little front areas here. And cover up all of those, all that tape. Sometimes you have to divide it into two pieces. Okay, let me move my camera so you can see a little bit more of the arrangement up here. Okay, now, because I've decided to put this one up here, see this one here, I need something right here as well, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Right there. right about there. I already had an idea of how, how to cut it because I wanted about the same with this one over here. But what you're always going to be doing is you're going to be holding it up against your container to see where it fits and then two inches or an inch. Or two, well anyway, an inch and a half to two inches at least to go into your foam. Uh, and anything longer than that you can just trim it off. Okay. I got that in there. I'm not going to worry too, too much about weight on here because I do, I do want to fill some flowers in right here. And I've got a lot more of these leaves to continue filling over here. But let me go ahead and start forming my flowers that are going to come up here. Now, you do want to have more of these to put right here in the front to cover all that uh, tape. Now, I'm probably going to use it now, now that I'm looking at it. Um, now, if this was the centerpiece, I'd want to do in the back, but I'm not going to worry about the back because this is going to be an arrangement that's going to go somewhere where there's a wall behind it, so it's not a centerpiece. It is just an arrangement. I'll put some more of these down here. Cut them into smaller sections so they don't protrude too much outward. See what I mean? Just keep filling this in with more uh, green. But before I can do well, let me go ahead and do this one that I had already set aside. Cut off any dry leaves. Always use your scissors or uh, prunes, pruners or wire cutters to cut so you get a nice, clean, sharp cut instead of pulling on something because. Uh, you may end up pulling on the fibers and little strings of the actual plant. You don't want to do that. Okay, so I want to use, um, I have these other greenery here. And I've got these grasses, these tall grasses. These are going to be great up here. And then maybe one coming out of here. So let me go ahead and see how that would look. Oh, that would be lovely. I'm going to put it right about here. But let me trim off some. 
just to make it a little more stable because it's so long and so much weight. So I'm going to put it right about here. So hopefully when I'm pushing it in, because it is a thin grass, there we go. And it creates this little curve right here. You see that? And then the rest can be put here in front of this flowers, kind of like if they're coming out of the behind them. Uh, let's put one right about here. Once I push it in, it should shorten it. Is that too high? I'm going to cut it a little bit because I feel like it's popping out a little too too high. Let me use my scissors. It's popping out a little too high for my liking. There, I do want it to kind of, you know, be sort of like um, separate on itself because otherwise it's the only way that we can appreciate something like this, a little grass that comes out like that. You want to be able to see it. You don't want it, you know, hiding in front of something or completely behind. You want it sticking out further out than other things. So you don't want to add more right here when it's going to get covered up. Okay, so I've got three more to work with, but I'm going to set them aside because now I want to start working on the flowers that I want coming out of here. And I feel like um, these other lilies, I guess they are, kind of a lily, right here. I want these, I want one in the front here. So let me look which one, which one I like the best. They're both really pretty. I'm going to use this one though. I want this one in front of this flower, but off to the side a little bit. And I think I want the other one coming out this way. So now I've just got to decide the height again by holding it up against the container and doing it on the edge so I can move it up and down and decide. Now I'm, I'm measuring it from behind, but it's actually going to go in the front. But this is going to help me decide uh, how much to cut. So this is the edge and then about two inches down and then trim. When I say the edge, I'm talking about the edge of this, the top of the oasis. I'm going to put this one right in here, push it in, yeah, right there. Okay, now the other one, I want it like about right there, so trim it. Okay, now from this point, any other stem that I cut, it's going to get cut kind of short because I wanted to fill in all of this right here. So that's what I'm going to do, all right? And I might just go ahead and do a little bit of a speed up, just where you can see me putting things together. more flowers as you've seen. Uh, I'm coming now to these purples. I've tried working with certain color of flowers first to spread them out and then I've worked, gone on to the next color. Now I did, did do the yellows. Uh, I do have a couple more yellow carnations here and this is kind of peachy color and I still got some pink so I kind of skipped over that only because I felt like those would be the flowers that I would put wherever I feel like I need some something to fill. Now what I'm working on right now are the purples and then I've decided to kind of bring them around like that. But I feel like I need something way here in the front. So I've gotten this 
And if you saw that I was trimming some of the little bits off of them, are these little bits. So I'm going to cluster those together, and then at the very end, I can tuck them here and there uh, where I feel I need something, especially down here at the bottom. So this one I was putting it right here. And this is a different flower from this one, so I feel it's okay. So I've got this one and this one, which are the same, and they're separated by these two. These are the two in between, sort of, uh, that are different. So that's a nice balance right there. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the rest of them. I've got these beautiful green ones that I need to decide where I want these. <laughs> I've been filling it up some more with these other flowers and I've got very little to work with now as far as flowers are concerned the rest is all just basically the greenery and as you can see it's getting very full and it's creating a cascade a downward this way uh, I'm trying not to push too much against my flowers because I feel like I've been squishing some of them I'm just gonna balance this off right here with this I felt like this color was this color was very similar to these uh, lilies here. I'm just going to call them lilies. Um, so I'm just balancing out those colors with that. I'm trying to find little spots between the flowers where I can tuck these in. Uh, making sure they're not covering. Now uh, I don't know if you noticed that in some flowers that were in here I went ahead and I put wire on them and especially like these yellow, kind of like a delphinium sort of a flower, this one here, uh, this uh, long kind of a cluster of flowers. Uh, I put wire in those because the stem felt very delicate to me. So that's why I put uh, that on there. And then I put it on this rose here just so I can manipulate it a little bit to kind of bend forward because it was coming too far back no matter what I tried. So that one, I think um, that is why I put wire on those. Okay, so let's get some of this. Let's see, look at these beautiful, beautiful leaves. I feel like I want these kind of crowning this flower back here as well as that fern. So I'm just going to trim off. Find a little spot where I can kind of sneak in between the ferns. And then just kind of spread the little leaves so they're not all pushed up against each other. Just spread them out. Let me take a look at it from the front. Normally when I'm working on an arrangement, I'm looking at it, I'm looking straight at it so that I can see if there's any holes that need to be filled. Um, I do see a couple and I mainly see that like way down at the bottom here, but I've got these little flowers that I can fill in with. And I've still got this and I feel like this could sort of work as a flower. I think what I'm going to do to this one, like I was doing to some of the ferns, is actually trim it somewhere in the middle so that I can create two stems. Let's cut this one about right there. And then just trim some of this off the bottom here. I'm going to push, I feel like right here I need some filler, so I'm gonna push that right in there. Let me feel with my finger first so that I can make sure that I'm pushing into, start, into the uh, oasis. Ah, that looks pretty. Yes. And then the other piece, I feel like this is okay here. I think I'm just going to go a little bit behind, behind, right behind it and just a little bit higher. That can go right there. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. So now that I've got these, and because this has some yellow, I think I'm going to cut it up as well because there is two stems here. And then I could actually cut it like about right here create a stem here anything that wants to break off just take it off if it comes off easily if it doesn't use the scissors or your wire cutters or pruning shears don't force it okay i'm going to put 
some filler with this green and yellow leaf right there. That brings some of the yellow that's here over this way. I'm going to put this next one over here. There we go, just making sure that it's actually going into some oasis. And this other one, I kind of want to bring it over here somewhere. It's not very long, so I'm going to tuck it between the fern here. Right there, just so it shows right there. Okay. I also feel like these particular flowers, uh, I looked at all of them and I decided to choose the one that looked a little the freshest. I feel like they've probably been in the store a few days uh, before today uh, because they're not in their prime or their best, if you will. Okay, I'm tuck this one back here. Just kind of flip it where you can actually see the little berries and any leaves that look like you're seeing the back of them either trim them off or see if you can maneuver them around that looks nice okay now I said I have these grasses here and I said that I wanted to uh, fill here in the back I'm going to trim this off a little bit I barely want it to poke out but I do want to push it in far enough so it doesn't come out right there I think this one's good. Right in there. And then maneuver it in front of the fern leaf. So we see that. And this one way over here. And I think the length is just fine. And I like that it curls quite a bit so that it's coming down right here and rather than sticking out too far out this way. Okay. All right, so now we can take a look at it where I filled it in right there in the very front, the bottom edge with a little purple flowers, balancing out the purples that are up here as well. Now let's look at it from behind because I said I needed to put some ferns. I want you to see what it looks like from behind. You can see that there's some ferns here, right here, These, this particular type of leaf. It's probably called something else and I don't recall. But right in this little area there isn't any, so I'm just gonna add just a couple back here so that's what I'm going to do and I like I would like a little bit more here in the front so that I don't have like this little gape look right there all right so now we do have some of our baby's breath and all I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of a highlight it does have this yellow so the yellows do add a lot of highlight to this arrangement but I'm just gonna take a little bit of it the great thing about this is that it dries really well and it actually makes a really nice uh, little flower, little filler for a dry floral arrangement, even on its own. And they're great to make little crowns for the hair, for weddings and such, and for corsages. Okay, I think that looks fantastic. Let me just put that little leaf that I need up in the front. I have to keep looking at my camera because I, I feel like it's going to turn on me any minute. Fill in that little gap right here. Oops, I don't think that was long enough to do that. Oh, yeah, it's okay. That's good. All right, and there we go. That is a finished, a fresh floral arrangement. All right, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed watching me create this fresh floral arrangement and that you have taken something from it and you learned something. There we go, I think it looks lovely, it's beautiful. This would be very appropriate to take to someone on their birthday, maybe take it to their hospital. Uh, you might even want to consider taking this to a funeral. The only difference that I would do this if I was going to take it to a funeral is I would put it in a plastic container rather than a ceramic or glass. The reason being is that this may be taken 
to the cemetery and placed out there so you don't want to have a glass container or a ceramic that could break and then uh, leave shards of ceramic or glass out on the grass so you don't want to do that so make sure you use a plastic container it'll also make it lighter to carry uh, over so it won't be a burden for those who have to have that task of carrying flowers over or if the uh, family wants to keep the arrangement it will also be a little bit lighter for them to carry it home if they wish to do so okay so that's it I'm gonna give myself a big old thumbs up I hope that you will give me a big old thumbs up and that you will watch the next uh, floral arrangement while we work with fresh flowers as well and I believe I'm going to do a centerpiece I would like to create a bouquet for the following one and then a corsage and a, hopefully a uh, God willing, <laughs> I will be able to do those uh, for you. Uh, if you do want that, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, so, again, give me a big old thumbs up. Leave a nice comment down below. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you enjoyed this, I will bring more uh, videos like this for you. So hit that notification bell so that you get notified of my videos, which is every Tuesday and every Friday. And once in a while, I do a weekend vlog. And um, make sure you share on your social medias. And as always... Enjoy.